What's up guys, welcome to another episode of working on the Hilux drift build. Today we're doing a bunch of fun things. I have acquired some Recaro Bride bucket seats for the drift car. Uh, I don't know, you guys can tell me in the comments what you think about this. They're Recaro bucket seats but they have the Bride gradient on them. So that's really super confusing but whatever, I got them for super cheap. They got rails on them. They're perfect for what we need them for, which is to hold us steady while we're drifting. So we're going to chuck those in. Uh, we've got some bonnet pins that we need to throw in. A boost gauge so that we can see whether we're actually uh, getting any boost. You know, it's good to know how much boost we're getting. And also, I'm going to rip the turbo set up and the manifold off and chuck all new gaskets in there because I think there's a small leak and we need as much uh, spool as possible so we can get all the boost into the engine. So yeah, just uh, some fun stuff to do on the Hilux. Oh, we're, we're also extending, we're also extending the LCAs uh, to get a little bit more steering lock. Then I'll just set everything up properly, then we're going to send the car away to my friend Damon who's going to video a bunch of stuff. He's putting the roll cage in, he's welding the diff. I think he's going to install a hydro handbrake as well because he is the one that's going to be driving it at Drift X, which is the drift event that we have in two weeks time. And then I need to start working on the E36 because that's the car I'm going to be driving at Drift X. So we've got a bunch of stuff to do. I'll be doing episodes on prepping the A36. But let's get started on this thing. I'm going to rip these manifolds off. And that's it. Took me about 15 minutes to take the whole setup apart. That's the best thing about having everything top mount. And now uh, she's all out. Definitely could use a clean up down there. Turbo, manifold, J pipe. Oh god, this, this setup is so funny, it cracks me up. So I uh, pulled the um, manifold off the J pipe and inspected inside to see why it wasn't sealing with the gaskets, and it turns out it has a real weird. Uh, style of gasket in there. Uh, I forgot to take a video for you guys, but here's a photo. And then I just realised I should probably just weld the two manifolds together so that they can never they can never leak again because it can all come off as one whole unit anyway, as you just saw in the time lapse of me pulling it all apart. So there's no point trying to put a gasket in there and risking it blowing out again. So we'll just weld it together, put it back on, and then we'll never have the problem again. So that's what we're going to do. And there we have it, she's all welded together. I'll give it a quick scrub down. Now we can chuck it back together and hopefully zero leaks. Just having a quick coffee break and uh, picking up a couple of parts for the E36. Gotta get that coffee, man. Mm. Oh, it's just a cup of motivation, that is. All right, we're back from our food trip. I've got the Hilux all back together. There's no leaks anymore, which I'm super stoked about. But this thing goes so good now, it's crazy. I did not expect it. It spools up way faster. The wastegate comes on, which means we know we're getting seven pound of boost because that's got a seven pound wastegate spring in it. It's pulling super hard. I didn't go too hard because we still have to sort out the fuel side of things. Um, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the Recaros in and then I'm gonna pull the stock mechanical fuel pump off which is this here you can in fact drill and tap into the bottom of it and put a boost reference line and this that'll make this stock fuel pump a rising rate fuel pump which means for every pound of boost it'll add another pound of fuel pressure and these are good for about 15 pound of fuel pressure which is awesome because we're only running seven pounds so we only need about 12 or so pound of fuel pressure um, so that should sort out our fuel stuff uh, a friend of mine, Damon, who's doing the cage, he's going to put it on the dyno and make sure it's all safe. See how much power it's actually making, which is kind of exciting because, you know, we'll put the turbo on. We kind of want to know how much power it's making. I estimate right now it's doing about 130 kilowatt or 160 horsepower, which is, I think, 50 horsepower up on what they make from stock, which is about 110 horsepower for you American guys. 
Um, but let's get started on these jobs. Beautiful day here in Melbourne. So uh, removing the seats just required removing four 14mm bolts, two at the back, two in the front, easy. Oh dude, free potato chip, yes, that's the best. Just kidding, gross. Cool, so as you can see this one down here doesn't match up. Up front, these look pretty good, this will bolt straight up, the other side will bolt straight up by the looks of things. The same width which is kind of amazing. So they'll bolt up at the front, this is the modification at the back. I think I have to do the same to the other side at the back, other than that, they're good to go. The driver's seat is installed, it looks pretty rad if you ask me. It's all slowly coming together. Alright, so extending LCAs. These are a pretty special type of LCA, I guess. They're bolt in, so there's three bolts holding it in. One, two, and then another one back here on the other side. So you undo those. So that's uh, the three bolts undone, you can clearly see the holes now. And basically what we do is just make some spaces so the LCAs extend, it's really hard to do with one hand, extend it outwards, like that. So I'm just using some uh, old steel that I had lying around, um, we just marked out the crosses, one here, one here, I'm going to go ahead and drill those out and then I'll cut them out with the grinder and that's literally the plates we use. I'll go ahead and make these, drill these holes and make the cuts and we'll install them. Bam, they're installed, super easy. Now I've just got to tow it out a little bit because uh, the extended LCA makes it tow in heaps. I still need to chuck some welds on to make sure that it's super strong. But for now, that'll do so I can put it back on the ground. I'll adjust the um, tow quickly and then we'll see how much lock, extra lock it's given us. We'll get in there guys. We'll get in there. Woo! Look at that turbo setup. She's so nice. We are going out for all you can eat Japanese tonight. You excited? Oh my god. I want to eat all the food. Yes, same. I've been uh, starving myself all day so that I can eat as much or you can eat Japanese because that's how it roll. This is a really nice feature of your car. Looks like it does lots. Yeah, that's the um, battery pipe. Yeah, you need one of those. Yeah, it's the battery um, ear intake so because battery to keep the battery cool comes yeah. out the bonnet. Nice. Everyone's going to think it's a wastegate but it's just... It's just your battery pipe. It's just my battery. Standard. Yeah. If you don't have one of those, what are you even doing with your life? I know. Just take it home, basically. All right, let's get this going because I want to go to Japanese. Oh, thanks for the water. Cheers. You're welcome. I got a good setup going on. All right, guys, we're all done here. Bunch of dirt fell out of the car. That's pretty cool. Yeah, so the wheel's ready to go on. Magic. Awesome, the car's all back together, looks wicked, both sides are more or less the same now, still need to set the alignment properly but we'll have a quick look and see how much lock we've got eh? That's pretty good, still not full lock either, so that's full lock here, not bad, pretty good, super stoked with that, everything's looking wicked, turbo setup's good. Seat looks good in the car, wheels look awesome. Just in general, I reckon it looks pretty wicked, so we'll pick up where we left off tomorrow. We're gonna to install the boost gauge, install the passenger seat, 
make sure everything's perfect and then we're going to drop it off to Damon and he's going to do the cage well the diff and a couple of other things so mad progress so good thanks for watching guys see you in the morning what's up guys Woo! we're back and it's another day starting the morning right with a nice coffee so I've just found out that we will be dropping the Hilux off this evening to my friend Damon. His dad tunes carbureted cars for a living, so I'm quite excited to see what they're going to do with this thing and how much power they're going to push out of it. And saying that, we have a bunch of jobs to do today to get this thing finished. Oh, yummy. Let's do this. So, this is the mechanical fuel pump. Oh, that's leaking fuel all over me. Um, I'm going to be honest with you guys. I've never mucked around with one of these before, but I did a bit of research online and found out that you can boost references to be one to one rising rate with the uh, boost, which means that for every pound of boost you'll get an extra pound of fuel pressure and these are good up to 15 psi. So what we're going to do is we're going to drill and tap into one of these holes with a nipple that we can uh, apply boost to and then the other hole will, f will cover up otherwise that would uh, be a boost leak. So yeah. Alrighty, so now that we've uh, got the boost reference line all in, we're going to go ahead and put some epoxy um, around where we've drilled and, drilled and tapped and also over the two holes so that the nut boost leaks. And then our fuel pump is boost reference, and we can chuck it all back together. Wicked. So uh, we have the epoxy, it's currently drying over the holes and sealing our boost reference. And while that is drying, I'm going to go ahead and install some bonnet pins into the Hilux because at the moment it has no hood latch and if we take it for a drive it risks the hood flying up and smashing the windscreen so I've done that before and it sucks so uh, I'm going to chuck these in quickly before I forget and then by the time I put these in the fuel pump should have dried so that we can put the fuel pump back in and then we can test whether the boost reference line actually works on the fuel pump alrighty so we've got the uh, first bonnet pin in I put a little bit of red silicon on top just so we can drop the hood down, let it touch, and that's how we know where to drill our hole for the top. One down, one to go. Alrighty, bonnet pin's done. Now it's time to put our boost referenced uh, fuel pump back in and test it out. Pretty stoked with the outcome really. It was very simple. Epoxy's dry, looks good. So the fuel pump is all back in. Everything is nicely done up and I've run the boost reference line and teed it off the inlet manifold here so I know that it's definitely going to be getting a, a boost reference which is nice uh, now I need to set up the boost gauge and then I'm going to take it for a spin and I'll take you guys along with me man so I've moved on to mounting the boost gauge literally just drilled two holes in the bottom here cable tie, boost gauge a bit hard to do with one hand and that's how it sits Whoops. Alright, so we just clip this, chuck this boost T in here, and then run the line through this grommet right up here and up to the boost gauge. And there we have it. So we've teed into the boost line, running up through the grommet, and then coming up through here into the boost gauge. So now, if we start the car, we should see the vacuum in the gauge. Let's have a look. Oh, let's turn the window wipers off. Here we go. Look at that. Works like a treat. Beautiful. So now, I just have to chuck the passenger seat in. And then, I think well, bas it's basically ready. Ty, what are you doing? Just doing the dishes. Damn. Painting your wheels a different colour, chucking some new wheel nuts on, on the 86. Nice. What colour are you doing the wheels? Rose gold. Rose gold. Mm. 
Nice. Ooh. I'm glamming up. You love it? Yes. Mad. By the way, if you haven't subscribed, you should probably subscribe just because my girlfriend's so hot and you want to see more of her. You know what I mean? I'm going to keep on spraying. Tara's wheels are finished. They look awesome. Nice new raised wheel nuts in there as well. Just to keep them looking fresh. Damn. Such a cool car. We are finished with the Hilux. Can't stop, but I wanna stop thinking about you. I take a hit and you light it up. What if it won't fall through? It's come such a long way. It's crazy. Look at that. Drive to the track. It's even got a tire rack on the back. Alright, let's go for a drive and then load it up onto the trailer. <laughs> As you can see, it goes pretty good. She's loaded up. So let's head out to uh, Geelong. It's about an hour and 20 minutes of driving. See you when we get there. All right, we've arrived. We made it. This is Damon. Hey guys. Damon, say hi. Hey. He's gonna be taking over the bill from here on out. Doing all the hard stuff that I left him. And it's the final resting place for now. Damon's gonna take care of all the, the fab work. Ooh, check this out. E30. Damn. Looks good, dude. Yeah, it's coming up alright. It's just wow. need more time. It's the S13 yeah. rear end. Yeah. Crazy. Alrighty, I'm out. Drop the car off. It's in his hands now. Don't worry guys, he'll be filming everything that he does. So you'll still get to see it all, but uh now it's time for us to concentrate on the E36 for Drift X. So the next couple of episodes you'll see will be us prepping the E36. Now I get to drive both of my cars in a Drift event, which is pretty rad. But for now, thank you guys for watching. Make sure you like, subscribe, follow me on Instagram, edit it's Mike Clank. Thank you guys so much. Cheers. Peace.